they will be performing a thermometric titration. For the lab, we need an acid, in this case of an unknown solution, and a base, in this case of a known solution, 1.5 molar. a burette, a burette clamp, a funnel to fill up the burette, and a ring stand for the burette, a pipette filler, a volumetric pipette, in this case 25 centimeters cube, two styrofoam cups in a beaker, and a thermometer with another clamp. In the burette, we will place the acid, in this case, up to zero. That is going to be our initial volume. And uh, using the volumetric pipette, we're going to transfer exactly 25 centimeters cube of the base inside the styrofoam cup. And we are going to wait until the temperature stabilizes. In the meantime, the temperature stabilizes. We will um, build up a t data table with the volume and the temperature. The volume initial will be zero and the initial temperature will be the one that we read after it's stabilized. We also will place a lead on the um, styrofoam cups to prevent heat loss and uh, we're going to be cutting it uh, so as to be able to drop certain amount of volumes of the acid on the base and be able to swirl it. Every single time we make a measurement, uh, we need to record that in our data table, recording the maximum temperature that achieves every single time that we add a certain amount of liquid. We are going to place more or less um, five centimeters cube each time and wait for the temperature to stabilize, read the temperature, and record it. Every single time we make a measurement, we have to wait for the temperature to stabilize. In the meantime, we need to swirl the uh, styrofoam cups and um, be sure that it's covered by the styrofoam lid. And every single time we make a measurement, then we are going to add more acid. That is going to take between one or two minutes in between each measurement. every single time we make a measurement we need to record the maximum temperature and the actual reading in the burette don't make any calculations just read in my data table you can see that the temperature increases and up to a certain volume added and then it's going to decrease again that doesn't mean that we have one curve going up and down but actually we have two lines that are going to intercept in the maximum temperature that is the neutralization temperature using excel i pass all the information and then i build up a um, chart using all the data that i collected and you can see that there are several points that are marked uh, i made a uh, the best fit for the two lines, one increase in temperature and the other one decreasing. And when they intercept, I extrapolate the maximum volume added. You don't need Excel to make the graphs. You can do it with graph paper. And uh, be sure that you get the best fit for both lines. And the maximum temperature that where they intercept will be the uh, mark for the maximum volume. That volume is going to be used in our calculations. In this case, it's 16.2 centimeters cubed. With all the data that we have, we need to remember that we began with sodium hydroxide solution 1.5 molar and 25 centimeters cubed of those. And the volume that we calculated of the chlorhydric acid that achieved the maximum temperature was, as per the graph, 16.2 centimeters cubed. So the first step is calculating the number of moles in sodium hydroxide in the original solution in the styrofoam cup. 
So the volume of the sodium hydroxide times the concentration is going to give us the number of moles. The second step will be calculating the moles of hydrochloric acid that balance the moles of sodium hydroxide. But we know that sodium hydroxide and hydrochloric acid react in a 1-1 ratio. So actually the number of moles of the hydrochloric acid will be exactly the same as the ones calculated in the step number one. The last step will be calculating the concentration of the hydrochloric acid. We have the number of moles, we have the volume in liters, and we can calculate the molarity, and that gives us 2.31 molar of hydrochloric acid. Of course, you need to express that according to the significant digits. This experiment is only an example. There are three things that you need to know the volumes of each chemical, the concentration of one of them, and the molar ratio in the reaction. With that information, you can calculate any titration, thermometric or not. If you have any questions, you can send me an email. Thank you very much, and have a nice day.